Tower. This is uh, General Brigadier ready to take off. Back at it today, uh, hauled a bunch more water, uh, just trying to get a finish, a really nice, pretty, shiny finish on it. Somebody asked me where I got the slope meter, you know, I don't really remember Matt got that, I'll have to ask him. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find it on Google. You can find anything on the internet. So. Well, I, need, I need a roller. I need a roller bad. Um, I gotta figure out something. The roller would make this a lot faster and a lot easier. Because once you get it hard and tight, it just cuts so pretty. But getting it to that point's kind of difficult if you haven't got a roller. Okay, here's a little tip on crab and you'll see how I'm crabbed here. A couple of reasons I'm doing this. Uh, that's a 14 foot moldboard on a 14G with big rubber. And that don't work too good. Originally this had a 16 foot moldboard. People I bought it from bought a new 14 with skinny rubber. Took the brand new 14 foot blade off the one with skinny rubber. Put the 16 footer on it. So the problem with the 14 foot is it's hard to kick it out past the other side. Um, side shifted all the way. Now you can side shift farther to the right than you can the left. So what I'm doing here is trying to kill two birds with one stone. So I've got my wheel clear over here against this windrow so I'm packing this loose material. And I've got my tandems out here which they're also packing. And if I happen to spill a rock or a clod or something around the corner of the blade, end of the blade, the tandems will get it and crush it in the ground. And uh, see how hard and smooth this is over here in the middle? You can see what packing it does for finishing it. But there's a lot of rocks out here, little lava rocks, and you hit them. And you bring them up, and so I want to smash these down with the tandems if they come out from the blade and get them mushed in because you got airplanes on here and the last thing you want to do is hit a sharp rock at 100 miles an hour when you're loaded so um, if you want to if you want to see somebody that knows a lot about crabs I mean crabbing <laughs> go check out uh, Beefy Blade Hands Instagram channel uh, Ryan is his name. Ryan is expert level greater operator. You can learn a lot from watching him. He really knows what he's doing. So, tip of the day... When you're blading, if you really want things to look pretty and neat, you need to have the tip of your blade um, out there where your tires run. So your rear tires run over that seam and press it flat. Let me show you what that'll look like. 
So that's what it'll look like. Just pretty, pretty. Uh, no visible transition marks, no nothing. And that's what I'm shooting for. And then I'm trying to hold a 3% or just a little bit more than that here. But they've blown a lot of material out of the center of this runway. Um, so over in the middle, there's not near 3%. But out here on the edge, there's still 3%. And the reason is you got to maintain that is it need the water to run off as quick as it can after it storms so it will dry out quick. Um, you don't want puddles and stuff. But anyway, there's all kinds of tricks to grading, things you can do. And I find the best way to learn this stuff is to just get in and scream and yell and cuss and just persevere and, and then you'll get it so there's a lot of swearing involved to learn how to blade ask anybody who's done it morning everybody it's still dark outside it's dark 30 this is my fitting bucket basically what it is it's a homer bucket from the homer depot and i've kind of organized things in here different stuff but i need oh what's this that's a bolt tray in the fitting deal. So I gotta have a plug today for the water truck. The one that's there is pretty much stripped out. I need a quarter inch plug. I kinda like that style. I'm gonna use that one. And then it's got a bushing. So it goes from like three eighths to quarter inch. So I might, and it's a brass bushing in the pump. But the threads are stripped. So it's probably, possibly, that one right there. Quarter to three eighths. So I'll bring those two with me. But um, these are these are handy because I take them with me to jobs and stuff. We had them out on the Gooberment job. Oh, by the way, you probably noticed there's a bunch of my videos that I had to delete. We'll go into that some other day, but anyway, so I got to go out and we've got to spray some water. Oh, got the V-belt on the car too, or not V-belt, serpentine. So anyway, you guys have an awesome day today. Okay, we're going to fire up the Brigadier. Engine run thingy bob on. Contact. Oh yeah. Fires right up. Runs like a watch. Now that got a little squealy belt there for a minute. And this thing just it just runs so smooth. Ooh, there we go. Now we're going. Okay, kids, we got the uh, Super Jimmy all loaded up. We're gonna go run this runway and pack it down. Brigadier 
ready to take off. for the runway and I'm just trying to keep this damp and wet for these guys so it doesn't come apart plus it packs it down it's so hard they're leaving black marks on it where they land <laughs> so I know that's good so they got an 802 that just rolled in and they, it's like they got her filled up feeling it and the 502 is waiting over there on the apron to come in. So I'm just keeping the runway nice and damp so that it doesn't go to pot. Keep the dust down. That is a big machine there, that 802. Holy moly. Holy cow, the, the whole ground rumbles when he takes off. Woohoo! <laughs> That's loud, isn't it? Oh, our storm blew through last night. We're supposed to get snow Monday, if you can believe it. Put down quite a bit of rain. Anyway, good morning to you, everybody. I got the pay dirt box stuff full. Uh, got hats going out to Timothy Gallagher from Orchard Park, New York. Ronnie Hasori from Crescent City, California. Mike Sprague from Elida, Ohio. Brandon Bedrosian from Fresno, California. Jeremy Beeson from Bremerton, Washington. Gregory Butler from Delvan, Illinois. James Grant from Littleton, Colorado. Riley Garrett from St. Cloud, Florida. James Tigert uh, from Brookings, Oregon. Mark Hensley from Hillsboro, Ohio. Andrew Holmes from La Center, Washington. Bill Gray Sullivan III from Coates, North Carolina. Leon Wagner from S. Bon, Kansas. Roger Irish from Greenwich, New York. Scott Weeks from Smithfield, Utah. And Neil Strong from Golden, Colorado. And if you think I got all that in a box, you're crazy. 
I'm going to go fill Jake's box now. <laughs> Give me the full load. Okay, that's a super dump. That's got 25,000 pound front axle. Three lift axles, tandem drive, and then that one flips over there. He had 25 ton in there. Or something 14g for doing this a little large large marge okay that's as good as this guy can do with a 14g i don't have all that fancy automation like beefy blade and anyway they just wanted this built up so the camper would sit level on it for their pilots so i think i have accomplished that I just got to do one more over here.
Okay, that's as good as I can get with a 14G. Um, they're just parking uh, camp trailers on here, and they needed a wider pad and it, longer out there where it drops off so they can get them level easier instead of using nine miles of cinder blocks. I know, I know I should have a skid steer. I'd sure like to have one. That'd be an ideal to level this up, but... So I just had two of them to do, and uh, this one's not as big, smaller trailer, so pretty flat, and then a taper off the back, so gas windy today. They tell us we're going to have snow Monday. I'm not looking forward to that. That's probably why it's blowing. It's blowing a storm in. So this is what our crushed three-quarter gravel here looks like. And this is probably a 60% fracture. Uh, all the rocks that are three-quarter in dimension or smaller fall through the screen. Everything bigger gets crushed. Our pit run gravel here is a six-inch minus cobble with a lot of sand in it. Um, you don't have the 200s. You don't have the expandable material. It's an excellent gravel. Uh, the gravel you saw in my subdivision video, it's perfectly fine gravel for building on, but you've got to have water in it and you've got to process it with a grater. And those guys were pushing it around with a backhoe and you can't do that. If you don't have the rolling action of the blade and water in it, it doesn't stay mixed up. And then if you, you're blading to a grade as you go, your big ones fall in and get cut off and buried. If you're using a bucket, what happens is your fines will fall out even if you have water in it and you end up with cobbles rock pockets. And so you've got to use a motor grader. This is the airplane that I learned how to fly in. This is the one I soloed in. And uh, I did that when I was 16. But anyway, my good friend Zane has totally restored this for the owner, Miss Carla. And uh, he's done a really good job with it. Uh, interior is just absolutely beautiful. He did a super job. Love the yellow. Yellow and white. Yellow is my favorite color. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> anyway, it's a nice little airplane. They've put some big tires on it. And... Uh, that's a blast to fly. I used to fly that a lot. Oh, what's the weather like where you're at? <clears throat> it's nasty here. I'll bet there'll be snow on the hills. We'll see it in the morning. I can see it down there, Pocatello. I think we're on the outskirts of it. So that's why I'm sitting in the Super Dodge, putting a box in the mailbox for Glenn Goslin, who lives in Amityville, New York. Um. Anyway, thanks for supporting me, Glenn. Box is on its way to New York. Uh, another couple hats going to Riley Garrett out of St. Cloud, Florida. Thank you, Riley. Uh, a couple of black and yellow Richardsons. If you want some of those other Richardson hats, just go ahead and order any Anderson hat. And then in the special instructions, tell me which one you want. They're not in the store yet. Uh, my IT guy's gone fishing, so that's how we got to do it. So Janet from Utah wanted to know about my cameras. Janet, these are Mobius's. Link below. I get these from buymobius.com. Uh, a uh, good guy in New York named Mark handles these. Okay, these two are the newest offerings from Mobius. These are called the Maxis, Mobius Maxi. Uh, these shoot 1080, 720, WGA, do all kinds of cool things. This is what they call the original Mobius. And I have gone through several of these. Uh, right now, this is the only working one I have. I really love these because they do time-lapse video. I prefer time-lapse video over time-lapse photography because you just put the video on there and away it goes. You don't have to edit all the millions of pictures together. So I really love it for that. Um, anyway, they you can shoot either 1080 or 720 by just 
scrolling through the mode button. Uh, they're pretty simple to operate. They come with a housing on the bottom with the quarter inch threads so you can just screw a trucker's magnet to them. You can put them on a suction deal, whatever they make for mounting them. These are $70, $80. These are about $100. Uh, I just sent a box of them to Mark. He's got five of them repaired and going, which is awesome. One of them that I'm not displaying right here right now is called the Mobius 2. Uh, I had a bunch of those. I really like those cameras. And those are the ones he's getting fixed for me. I don't know if I had any of these in there or not. I may have. But anyway, just by telling you that he fixed five of them, <laughs> I, I shipped him a box full of them. I have been through a lot of these. And so doing a YouTube channel and filming is not cheap. I ruin a lot of cameras, a lot of gear. Uh, but anyway, I can't afford to do that with GoPros constantly. So this is what I buy it's a really good camera for what I do. So buy it from Mark, buy Mobius.com, because there are companies that imitate these and make knockoffs, and you do not want a knockoff. You don't want an imitation Mobius. Oh, uh, Shane was just here a few minutes ago and brought me this mug. A uh, nice gal down at the uh, lodge made one for him, and uh, he had one made for me. Uh, that's totally awesome, Shane. Thank you very much. A guy out of Rock Springs, David Washburn Jr., has sent Jeff some serious contraband. <laughs> you know, David, I think I have a can, and then I found one other one. Uh, he sent me this to put in the Challenger, and I love R12. It's the best stuff in the world. But that thing has oil in it set up for 134. Now, I could tip it up, take it off, tip it upside down. I could probably get it out, flush it out. But you really got me uh, going with that R12. I love that idea. Uh, I'd just like to find a whole bunch more cans just to keep it charged up and, you know, have some on hand just in case I needed it. So, thank you for sending me the contraband, man. That was totally awesome. Hey, everybody. want to introduce you to some of my awesome subscribers. want to start out with uh, Mark Addington. He's from uh, Thompson, Connecticut. Uh, I think he said Local 4 of the Operating Engineers. Um, that's cool. John Irwin from Hayden, Indiana. Thank you for subscribing, John. Daniel Kiefer from Rosamond, California. Thank you for subscribing, Daniel. Kevin Morgan from Helena, Montana. Uh, hope you made it through the storm, Kevin. And Edward, I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name from... I don't even know how to pronounce that in Wisconsin. Nye... Yeah, whatever. I can't... I can't do that. Edward Nymienski from Viroqua, Wisconsin. <laughs> Thank you, Edward, for subscribing. Uh, and Renee Michael Wolf Mortensen, he's from Denmark. Thank you for watching Jay Pater all the way from Denmark. Hey, if you want some of my hats, uh, go to my store at www.jpater.com. Uh, if you want any of these Richardson hats, uh, the black with the charcoal, the just black black, uh, or the black and yellow. Um, just order any Anderson hat and then right here in the special instructions, uh, tell me which hat you want and I'll get them out to you. And thank you for the support. If you'd like uh, any of the old Kenny coloring books, uh, there's always a pinned comment at the top of every one of my videos. Uh, click on the more button. It has all the links in there. Uh, you can get this at Amazon.com for $7.50. And I still have a lot of calendars left. They're only 10 bucks, and that includes free shipping with those. So thank you very much.